Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I will continue with the uh, definition of group action and uh, we will also see some examples of group actions. Okay, so, let us recall what we defined. So, I gave two definition of group action. So, we will always work with the first definition. Okay. So, what, uh, what is the meaning of a group G acting on this set X? So, again we take a set to be non empty set. Okay. So, we say, so recall this is the recap. So, we say G is acting on the set X again via this tau. If the tau there is this tau is a group homomorphism from G to S X. Okay. So, we use this shorthand notation. So, what is this shorthand notation that I introduced? So, this is to denote the image of x under tau g. Okay. So, here we have g let us say it is mapped to tau g. So, then the shorthand notation is indeed for x in x and g in g you denote tau g of x by just g dot x. Okay. This is the notation that we will be using. So, this notation like I said should not be confused with the group multiplication because this G is coming from capital G and this X is coming from capital X. So, this is from the group and another element from the set. So, let us see uh, what this means okay, uh, in, in terms of this uh, uh, shorthand notation uh, what is the meaning of tau being uh, group homomorphism. So, recall again. So, some of the things that we proved. So, if you take identity of the group and then if you act it on this capital X, like I said, it should be just uh, mapped to the identity element via this tau should be mapped to the identity element in S X, which, which is nothing but identity map from X to X. So, this uh, identity element acting on some element small x in capital X should be x and that is true for all capital X sorry all x in x. So, then if you take this two elements g 1 g 2 and then if you want to act that on x. So, then you see that you can apply first g 2 and then you can apply g 1. So, that is the meaning of this tau g 1 g 2 is same as being tau g 1 tau g 2. So, what is tau g 1 g 2 of x? So, that is supposed to be tau g 1 of tau g 2 of x. Okay. So, if you write using this shorthand notation you can see that this is g 2 dot x and then this is g 1 dot x. So, which is same as g 1 g 2 dot x. Okay. So, that is what I have written here and here this is the identity. So, the identity mapped by tau is identity of x. So, E g dot x which is tau identity of x is just x. Okay. So, now if you think about it tau g inverse will be tau g inverse. So, in particularly so, you have this uh, g inverse acting on this x that you can just simply uh, tell that uh, okay, we do not need any notation for that actually, but you should remember that tau g inverse should be tau g of inverse. Okay. So, the g inverse will be given by the inverse of g only okay. that is what. So, we say that okay, the given element g in g acting on given element x in x via this g dot x. Okay. So, that is the 
meaning of uh, this thing. And of course, we are suppressing the notation, we are hiding actually this tau under the carpet, okay, but to sometime it is very useful, okay. So, one had one one should get used to this uh, shortcut notation, then it becomes like somewhat easier to do the computation or proving. Okay, so let us start uh, looking at some examples. Okay, so now uh, as we actually define, okay, so if you start with any set x, so let us call this is example 1, you take any x, let us say this is a non empty set. So then you have this Sx, so which is the group of symmetric group on x, okay, the symmetric group on x. So, what we can do? We can take any subgroup of this S x itself, then that will actually naturally octan x. Okay. So, you take any subgroup of S x. For example, you can take S x itself, then you have this inclusion from G to S x. So, let us call it iota. So, this inclusion is a group homomorphism. Okay. This is obviously a group homomorphism. So, in particularly you can get a get action of this g on x via this inclusion. Okay, how it is acting? Okay, given g and g. So, this g is already a map from x to x. So, then this x map to g of x. So, that is your g dot x. You can verify easily this is a group homomorphism because it is just a inclusion of uh, g inside S x. So, that in particularly gives you the action of g on capital X via this inclusion. Now, if you take g to be S x, it will be just a natural, okay. uh, naturally the S x will act on x. Okay, this is one example which will be used later when we restrict to x being a finite set 1 to n. Okay. For example, one can prove that given any permutation on 1 to n will have what is called cycle decomposition uh, using the using this action. Okay. So, we will be interested in S n which is okay, the symmetric group on group on this 1 to n okay. and uh, we will say that S n acts on this 1 to n and we will use this to, to actually conclude something about elements of S n. Okay. So, this will be used again. So, here is the example 2, we can actually have various action of group on itself. Okay. So, let us start with uh, uh, G being a group. Okay. So, then G acts on G itself via what is called multiplication. Okay. So, I did not actually uh, really uh, differentiated between the right action, left action and so on, but uh, from the notation it is clear that okay, once I define uh, group action using this uh, homomorphisms. So, then it is clear that uh, okay, it is just uh, only the matter of notation. So, if I write this image of tau, tau g of x as g dot x, then we are talking about uh, the group acting on capital X via left, okay, the g dot x. So, this is a way of writing g dot x. So, because we are writing the group elements on the left, we call this is left action. Suppose, if we write this as x dot g okay so then this this is naturally will be right action so one can talk about left action and right action let's not get uh, get into those things so you can see that there is a dictionary between left action and right action so we will only stick with the left action we will always use this notation because i introduced the group action via this group homomorphism so we we don't care about this left and right actions we will just take always use this g dot x to denote tau g of x uh, image. Okay. So, now uh, 
uh, why I was actually telling about this because when I say G is acting on G via multiplication, there are two ways to multiply. One can multiply by left as well as by right. Okay, so then because I am only interested in the left, so we will actually talk about this left multiplication. Okay, what is the meaning of this? So let us see. So, so given this group element, okay, so we want to define a map from S G. Okay. So, how one can define this? Let us see. So, let us call this is tau again. So, given g we want to define tau g and the tau g is given by what is called this lift multiplication. So, what is tau g here? Tau g is a map from g to g. So, maybe I will call it uh, because it is a lift multiplication I will re rename this. Maybe I will call it uh, capital L. So, this is the lift multiplication. So, how L g acts? L g of some x is given by just g x. Okay, it is a usual multiplication of group elements. Okay, so, indeed uh, if you do not if you use that dot notation g dot x is, is exactly g x. So, let us not get confused with this group multiplication and this uh, group action abstract group action. So, uh, because of that I will just use LG whenever the multiplication is mentioned or this particular map is mentioned. Okay. So, LG of X is just given by GX. So, now the question is why this LG is, a, is an element of the symmetry group that is something we need to verify. Okay. So, that is uh, indeed obvious because the inverse of LG will be LG inverse. Okay. So, let us verify L g is indeed inside S g. Okay. So, for that what we need to verify L g is a bijective map. So, you can see that L g of okay, suppose g x equal to g y okay, let us say it is injective L g of x equal to L g of y. So, then that would imply that g x equal to g y. But by multiplying g inverse on both sides, you can see that this implies x equal to y. So, indeed L g is injective that is obvious. Now, given y, what you can do? You can take g inverse y and then L g of g inverse y is going to be y. So, that proves that it is indeed surjective. So, that means L g is indeed inside your symmetric group S g. So, now why this association is group homomorphism? Why this is group homomorphism? So, you compose them okay, let us take L g 1 L g 2 of x. So, then what it is? It is g 1 g 2 x. Okay. But this you can write it as g 1 times g 2 x. Okay. So, that means you first apply L g 2 on x and then you apply L g 1 on this L g 2 x. Okay. So, this is what in indeed this says. So, L g 1 g 2 is exactly L g 1 composition L g 2. Okay. So, it is indeed group homomorphs. So, that means this g is acting on g via left to multiplication or via this map L. Okay. So, here is another interesting uh, action okay, which is very very important action. So, this is the example 3. So, again the group is acting on G via what is called conjugation. Okay. This is a conjugate action group acting on itself via conjugation okay, or conjugative action. So, what is the meaning of that? So, let us see. So, what one can do? Okay, let us first of all look at uh, the map that we are interested in. You fix some g in g. Okay. So, then using this g what one can do? one can define this map C g 
which is a map from G to G. What it does? Okay, because we have group uh, in a group group multiplication, we can also give an element. Okay, of uh, given two elements G and X, we can talk about the conjugate of X by G. Okay, so that is the map we will we are interested in. So you take given X, you look at G X G inverse. So that is your map C G. Okay. So we we want to say that the C G is again bijective map from G to G. So why it is a bijective map? Let's verify. Uh, suppose G X G inverse is equal to G Y G inverse. That uh, that means the two images are same. So then by cancelling G and then G inverse, you can see that X must be equal to Y. So this proves that. C G is injective. Okay, now if you take any y here on the left side, you can take G inverse y G, and naturally it will be mapped to y. Okay, so that means C G is C G is surjective. So. That what we indeed proved, we indeed proved that C G is inside S G. Okay, so now we one can use this to define this conjugation action. So define a map from let's call it C only, G to S G, where G goes to this C G. Okay, we need to verify this map is indeed group homomorphism. Okay, let's let's see what it does. So G one G two On X is going to be G1 G2 X G1 G2 inverse, but if you work it out, this is exactly same as G1 of G2 X G2 inverse of G1 inverse. Okay, because this will be switching. See, G1 G2 inverse is G2 inverse G1. So then, if you think about it, this is exactly equal to First, you apply C G two on X. Okay, that is the middle term. Okay, this term is same as this term. So then you apply C G one on this term. Okay, so then you are getting you are C G C G one G two of X. So this proves that C G one G two is same as C G one composition C G two. Okay. So that implies the C is a group homomorphism. Okay, so that means we can actually uh, define this group action via the conjugation. So this is very very interesting action. Again, these actions uh, uh, will be. used in order to conclude many many interesting facts about our group as well as uh, uh, the the important things that are involved in this okay so uh, as before uh, the example 4 is is going to be just uh, the thing that you have seen in linear algebra suppose if you start with the group g Which is a subgroup of let's say GL of some vector space or the Euclidean space, whatever you can fix. So let's say V is a vector space over let's say some field F. Okay. So then, then naturally G is acting on this capital, capital V. Okay. How it acts? Because GL of V is indeed sits inside S V. Okay, the natural inclusion is going to give you group homomorphism. Okay, because G L of V is nothing but the set of all uh, invertible linear maps. Invertible linear maps means they are all bijective maps. Okay, so similar to this, one can actually take okay uh, anything like, for example, one can take G to be. Uh, okay, let's. Let's use some different notation. Let's say H being a group, okay. Given group, so then one can 
look at this automorphism of H. So, these are all uh, group isomorphism from H to H. Naturally, this is sitting inside SH. Okay. So, now if you take any subgroup of this automorphism of H, then naturally this G also acts on this H via this inclusion. Okay, because G sits inside SH is going to give you uh, group homomorphism from G to SH. So, one can take some subgroup of automorphism H, it naturally act on H. Okay. So, all these actions are very interesting, okay. they are very useful. So, let us see uh, like, uh, so I want to actually give you another important uh, action. Okay. So, let us call it uh, example 6. So, this is something related to subgroup. So, you start with the group G and then take H being a subgroup of G. Okay. So, this is a subgroup. Then we can form this G modulo H which is the set of all left cosets. of H in G. So, what it is is those X H where X in G. Okay. So, now what we can do I can take X to be this and then I can define a natural action of G on this X. What is that? So, let us call it uh, again this is also some kind of left multiplication. Let us call it L H. What is L H? L H of some G is a map from X to X okay, given by some coset X H map to G X H. Okay. I can naturally multiply by left of all these uh, uh, left cosets, again I will get left coset. Okay. So, that is the map that I am actually associating with L G of H. Okay. So, now let us check this is indeed group homomorphism. First of all why this L H G is inside S X. So, this is defined from X to X given by okay, X capital H map to G X capital H. So, maybe I will use G modulo H here just to emphasize it is acting on this uh, G modulo H. So, now note that uh, suppose you have, okay. so we, we want to say that uh, this thing is actually really, uh, really bijective map. So, one can is simply check so, the L H G inverse is the inverse map. Okay. So, this is not very hard. So, let us verify it is actually satisfying the group law. So, then it becomes clear this is actually the inverse map. So, L H of G 1 G 2 is applied on any H X H is going to be G 1 G 2 X H, but this can be grouped as follows. So, that means this is exactly equal to first you take L G 2 apply it on X H and then you apply L G 1 on this. Okay. That tells you that L H of G 1 G 2 is same as L G 1 H L G 2 H. So, that proves that this map is indeed group homomorphism from G 2 S X okay. and this indeed defines action. So, this action again is very very important action. Okay. This again we will use later. Okay. So, G naturally acts on not only on G, it is naturally acting on all the left cosets of G. Again you can define the right action on the right cosets, let us not get into that. 
maybe this is enough okay so i end with one final example which is again uh, uses subgroup so this is uh, now uh, so here we used the left multiplication on the left cosets so similar to this we can we can use the conjugation on all possible conjugates of h okay so here is the example 7 so let us take g to be a group and h being a subgroup of g so what one can do one can look at all possible conjugates of this h via all the elements of g okay so this is just all possible conjugates so this i want to take as my set x and then i want to define the action of g on this capital x okay via just conjugation again okay so then g acts on this xx let's call it uh, this is conjugation on this capital h okay then you map ch g which is a map from x to x where c g c g h of some element okay which which will look like h okay okay maybe let's use x x h x inverse we just conjugate via g so g x h x inverse g inverse so which is exactly equal to g x h g x inverse okay so now i want you to verify this is actually a group action okay so i will leave it to you to check c h g inverse is the inverse map of c g h this is something you can verify now what is about the group law so the group law is if you take g1 g2 h and apply it on x h x inverse you get g1 g2 x h x inverse and then g1 g2 inverse okay but if you rewrite this you can see that so this thing okay if you rewrite you get g1 g2 applied on x h x inverse g2 inverse g1 inverse which is same as saying you apply first c g2 h on x h x inverse okay and then apply c g 1 on that. So, that means c g 1 g 2 h is same as c g 1 h c g 2 h. So, the group laws are indeed satisfied. So, that means this actually gives you action of this capital G on this uh, set of all conjugates of this subgroup h. So, note that uh, so this is a simple exercise. So, any conjugate will be a subgroup because one can look at this uh, inner automorphism corresponding to g where x mapping to g x g inverse. So, that we have verified that is actually an automorphism. So, image of capital H will be just a g h g inverse. So, that will be a subgroup inside g. Okay. So, basically you are collecting all possible conjugates of H which are all subgroups and then we are saying that G is indeed acting on uh, this, uh, uh, th this collection of this subgroups which are conjugate to H. Okay. So, we have seen many many examples. Okay. I urge you to actually kind of uh, go through this very carefully because uh, so, group action is very very powerful tool once you abstract things ok. So, now you have so many examples for which you can apply and then directly get consequences ok or applications ok. So, so I, I 
urge you to actually go through this very carefully before actually attending the next class. Okay, I will stop here and uh, we will actually continue with uh, some properties of group actions and some terminologies related to group actions in the next class. Thank you, I will stop here.